you know, so it's been a long time for instance, where we've had a real discussion about like skin politics within the black community. So when you listen to a song like Complexion, you know, with, with our girl Rapson, right, North Carolina born and raised um, on that track, which guaranteed that this conversation about com com uh, complexion was also gendered in ways that we normally don't hear. Um, we see the first anthem of the Black Lives Matter movement in a song like All Right, right, which is not written for the movement, but We Shall Overcome wasn't written for the civil rights movement either, right? It was written for the labor movement in the 1940s. Um, and yet this becomes a kind of rallying cry when everybody that you believe with a month ago, they all talked about how they felt when that song would come on. And it's been a long time in which folks have been excited about black music in that way. Right, we continuously heard in Kendrick as folks were responding to references to that moment of Aretha in the late sixties and Curtis and Marvin in, 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 in the early you know exactly. Right. Curtis Mayfield and Marvin Gaye. <laughs> 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 you know, Bill Raheem Devon were when he talks about his his, his Marvin Gaye. Right. You know, we, we often talk about that Marvin Gaye moment. This is the first time in a long time we've had a popular black artist. And that's the critical thing, right? Someone who's topping the charts is on national television, you know, who excites people. But of course, it also worries me, right? You know, because, you know, five minutes later, he shows up with Taylor Swift, 